Good morning ladies and gentlemen. My name is Blue and this is a very basic 100 level tutorial on Auto Hotkey. For those new and old Turkers alike who may not be entirely familiar with the tools available to them, but want to begin impressing their friends. So, the questions that we will seek to answer in this video can be described as What is Auto Hotkey? What can it be used for from a Turking perspective? Where can you find it? How do you use it? What are the basic parts of a script? How do you pause or close a script? And of course, what are you wearing? So let's start at the top and work our way all the way down to the sexy bottom. Now before things get too hot in here, we'll answer the first question. What is AutoHotKey? Well this webpage we have been staring at for several long soul sucking seconds is actually the main page for AHK and it gives both a pretty thorough explanation of what AHK is as well as what it can do. There'll be a link to this page in the description. But since I am egotistical, I'm going to tell you in my own words. AHK is a proprietary programming language that allows you to create key macros and automate pretty much anything you can do with a keyboard and mouse. Now that is a pretty simplistic explanation, and it can do a whole lot more than that, but from a Turking perspective, that's a really good place to start. The next question to be answered is what can it be used for from a Turking perspective? Well, the most common uses for AHK among low level users who would be interested in a video like this would be text expansion and macro keys. Text expansion is quite useful for transcription in one example. It allows you to create short two or three letter combinations that will automatically expand to full phrases such as using the letters OMW to expand to On My Way. This allows you to create your own customized shorthand for use in your transcriptions, diary entries, emails or thesis statements. Macros and hotkeys are a little harder to explain on the other hand. These will allow you to create scripts where a single press of a button or two will set off a chain of events to automatically accomplish some incredible task. This can range from filling in radio buttons in a survey or hit to opening windows, writing things in text boxes, so on and so forth. AHK can do a lot more than this, but these basics are the fundamental building blocks upon which you will build your ever-expanding Turking empire. What follows is the question, where do I find it? Well, I already answered that, you should have been paying attention. So let's move right along to how do I use it? The majority of you are going to begin using AHK with scripts that you have gotten from the form until you begin writing your own. So let's go over to MTurk Grind where this incredibly shady guy Lot Crotan has uploaded the code for an incredible script that is supposed to send your worker ID when you press the number one. So let's take this code and turn it into a script. Copy it into your clipboard and we're going to bring it right out here to the desktop where we are going to right click new and auto hotkey script. And since we see we have a collection of scripts here, you always want to make sure you give it a name that you will recognize it for what it does. Because sooner or later, you'll have an entire collection of strangely named scripts and you'll need to be able to pick them out at a moment's notice. So we're going to call this one Lot Crotan's Incredible Script. And there it is. Now when we right click this, and we tell it to open with notepad, you'll see this gobbledygook up at the top. You don't need to worry about that because I said so. Now let's go down here. We're going to control V and paste it in there. And then we're going to tell it to save. And then we double click Lot Crotan's incredible script and we can see it pop up right here. Now if I press one, it should send this. Let's see if it does. We'll bring up this notepad right here. And if I press 1, nothing happens. Why is this? Well, it's because of the way that the script was written. These brackets right here actually are supposed to be describing the name of a key rather than sending a string to be typed out. So if we save this, we go down here and we tell this one to reload. 
now that we've made changes to it, when we come back over here and we press 1, we now get exactly what we were supposed to get and no matter how many times I press it, it'll just keep typing it out. We should be careful though, we know from experience that all work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. So let's delete that and play around with a modified script that I wrote for this video. So I'm going to do this in the development environment so that it's nice and colorized and you can see everything that's in here. This green text with the semicolon in front of it is commented out, which means it won't actually run. So when you make your own scripts, if you can't remember what they do, throw in a couple lines with a semicolon in front of them and that will be notes for you so that you remember what it does and how to work it. We can see here, Lot Crotan's incredible script is again appearing right there. And we've made a couple of modifications to it. The first is we added a carrot at the front. This carrot adds a control button to the beginning of it so that when you actuate it, you have to press control one instead of just one. The reason we do this is some worker IDs contain numbers in them. And if yours had a one in it and you told it to activate with one, you would enter an infinite loop of fiery death in which your worker ID would continuously cause the script to actuate itself and it would press it out into infinity. The same thing with this return right here. I realize that was already in the first script, but that return is also there to help prevent you from entering into infinite loops. We also added a second button here, Control 2. This one pauses your script in case you're running some time and you need to pause it to do a capture or to start working with a different script or something of that nature. And then we did control three here to exit the app. We also have some text expansion down here, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So first, let's see, we'll activate worker ID. You notice we've already got Lot Crotan's incredible script running. If we activate worker ID, you'll notice that both of them are running at the same time. This is by design. You have to remember when you have more than one script running that they don't use the same actuation keys or they will both fire off. Now we're going to close Lot Crotan's incredible script so that we can just work with worker ID. Now, if I press control one, we see dongle man. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is my worker ID, dongle man. And of course, if I press control one, as many times as I want to, we get into the same situation as before. Now, if we come down here to the tray, we can check out the other two keys. If we hit control two, we see the icon turn red. And the reason it does this is to let us know that it's been paused. We can hit control two again, it turns green, letting us know that it's ready to go. And of course, if we press control three, it goes away because we told it to exit the app. Let's bring it back up again, make sure that it's running. And then let's go back and let's take a look at our text expansion. Now I am just going to minimize this a little bit and bring this over here to the side so that we can see both at the same time. Now text expansion is fairly easy. The syntax is the first section here lists any modifier flags that you might want. In this case, we've got an O that tells it not to add a space to the end and a C that tells it to be case sensitive. And then the second section is your trigger text. In this case, it's blue. And then your third section is going to be what it replaces with. In this case, it's I'm Batman. So if I type BLU and a space, we get I'm Batman. The same with AMT, we get Amazon Mechanical Turk. Now these next two, you can see that we left the OC out of the front section. It still has two colons, but it's empty. And this changes the way the text expansion works. If I type what, we get yo, that's whack. Now the O tells it not to add anything to the end. So let's see what happens if I type what and end it with an exclamation point. It adds an exclamation point to the end. If I do the same with blue and add an exclamation point to the end, we can see it doesn't appear there. Now, if I type what with a capital, we can see that it still does yo, that's whack. If I do blue with a capital, nothing. We can also do what in all caps and it capitalizes the entire statement. You can see it doesn't happen with blue. 
So we've got AMT in all capitals, doesn't work because it has OC. And SUP with an exclamation point prints out this entire long message that we defined as SUP in the script. We can also write that one out in all capitals and scream at the ladies because everybody likes catcalling. That pretty much covers the uses of text expansion and hotkeys. We've shown you what the basic parts of a script are. We have basically one piece of information left to disseminate to you about AutoHotKey. And that is, for those of you who work and can't install AutoHotKey on your work laptops, can't have extensions installed into your browsers and whatnot, you can still use your scripts. Let's do this worker ID right here. And we are going to right click it and tell it to compile. This is going to produce an exe of your script that you can take to any Windows computer and use your scripts regardless of whether it has AHK installed or not. And it actuates the same way. If we double click it, we can see worker ID pop up. Now we can go to this notepad and we can do all the same things as before. Sup creates this. Control 1 is dongle man. Control 2 will pause it as you can see down here. And Control 3 will tell it to exit. Now there are a couple of differences when running it from an EXE in comparison to AHK. And those are that when you right click on it, let's go ahead and open it again. When you right click on it, you have fewer options. You can't edit it and you can't see what commands are in the script. All you can do is suspend it, pause it, and exit it. So after you compile your scripts, make sure you know what hotkeys it's using or what text expansions it's using because otherwise you won't be able to see it without experimentation. There is but one pressing question remaining, which is, what are you wearing? And my answer to you is, come find out. I hope you found this video informative, somewhat entertaining, and hopefully you've learned a thing or two. I hope you tune into the next one where I will be showing you how to write simple scripts on your own.